wide the doors to Christ, let him shepherd you. Welcome him into your heart, let your love be true. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be with each one of you. As we enter the divine liturgy, let us recall our human weakness and our sins and ask for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, you, my brothers and sisters, I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do. And I ask the blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for the peace of the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us together to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, let the light of your truth guide us to your kingdom through a world filled with lights contrary to your own. Christian is the name and the gospel we glory in. May your love make us what you have called us to be. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, If only you would heed the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law, when you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. For this command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious and remote for you. It is not up in the sky that you should say, who will go up in the sky to get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? Nor is it across the sea that you should say, Who will cross the sea and get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? No, it is something very near to you, already in the mouth and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. <clears throat> the word of the Lord. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect. 
perfect, refreshing the soul. The Lord's rule is to be trusted, the simple fine wisdom. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are true. All of them just Lord, you have the words Of everlasting life The precepts of the Lord are right They gladden the heart The demands of the Lord is clear Giving light to the eye Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are worth more than gold, than the finest gold. Sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. Lord, you have the words of The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man fell victim to robbers as he went down 
from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins. He gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, The one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. The book of Deuteronomy tells us something quite profound and urgent. You know what the will of God is. You know what the law of God is. Do it. Now most of us, as we begin our life's journey, have a pretty good grasp of right and wrong and good and evil. But as the years roll by, the world, the flesh, and the devil conspire to have us rationalize away that law of God, to hide it from ourselves, and eventually to say uh, evil is good and good is evil. And that's a tragic situation of human nature. Right from the beginning, we see the devil tempting Adam and Eve, saying, oh, ignore that law of God. You see, that fruit looks awful tasty. You'll learn a lot from doing it. And nothing bad will happen. And that's at the heart of every single one of our temptations. Now, when we come back week after week to hear the word of God, we're confronted with Love and hate, good and evil. And so our conscience is reformed rather than deformed. And people absent themselves from coming back week after week for many reasons. But one of the underlying reasons is that deadening of the conscience so that a person could start making his or her own rules in the pursuit of happiness, and in the end, find only emptiness. Many will say, well, we don't need religion today, Father. We have science to guide us. Well, if you really look at science, science has come up to an impasse. Science has done marvels in revealing the mysteries of the natural world that we can see around us. And we've benefited from it so much. But now the scientists realize, as they observe the vast visible universe around us, something is missing. Something that can't be seen or weighed or touched or measured, but they know with absolute certainty is there. So they gave it a name, dark matter. <laughs> we can't see it, but we gave it the name. And there's something else which is driving the universe in different directions and all the 400 billion galaxies. And they don't know what that is. So they said, well, that's dark energy. Give it a name, then you can move on to other things. St. Paul, in today's second reading, he names a whole bunch of invisible realities. He said, Christ is at the heart of all reality. The visible reality and the invisible. That invisible reality made up of dominions, principalities, and other powers that we can't see. Christ is at the heart of all of that, as well as the visible universe. And we come together week after week to be nourished by Christ, to be a little less foolish, 
today when we leave here than when we arrived here. To be a little wiser. A little wiser. Now we come to the Gospel of Luke. One of the most famous of all parables that has transformed the human conscience, even the conscience of those who are not believers, the conscience of those who do not go to the church. There's something in us that says we have to take care of the stranger, the weak, the widow, the orphan, somebody in trouble, even if we don't know them. A lawyer gets up and questions Jesus. What must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus throws the question back in his lap. He said, well, you're educated. What do you say? And he answers rightly. To love God with our whole mind, our whole heart, our whole soul, all of our energy, and to love our neighbor as ourself. Jesus says, do that and you'll live. In many ways, it simplifies things so wondrously. If someone lives like that in love, they're on the right track and their salvation is assured. If someone lives life, well, with loving God, sort of, maybe, part-time, well, you're a little bit on shaky grounds. If someone loves, well, yeah, I love my neighbors that I sort of like and I really can't stand others and I don't want anything to do with them and I hope that the worst happens to them. Well, you might think your salvation is still in the gray area. And Jesus said, boy, you hit the nail on the head. Do that and you'll live. So then he says, well, I want to justify myself for bringing up this question since I knew the answer already. He said, well, who's my neighbor? And we have this marvelous parable. A man is beaten and robbed. You might say he deserved it because he was going in the wrong direction. He was leaving Jerusalem, going to Jericho. That's what happens when you leave the safety of the holy city. That didn't figure in in the story. A priest comes by who knows the law and the prophets of Israel. He goes to the other side of the street. Why? Because if he came in contact with a corpse, he would be ritualistically impure and not be able to carry out his ritual functions. He knew the law, but he just misunderstood the heart of the law. Someone in need trumped the need for ritualistic purity. The same with the Levite, who was a priestly in the priestly class. They'd have to say so many prayers, carry out so many blessings for people. But if they came in contact with a corpse, they would have to go through a washing purification. They would have to suspend their Levitical practices for so many days. Well, I can't do that, so I'll go on the other side of the street. And here comes a Samaritan, the traditional enemies of the Jews, along. A man who didn't know anything about right ritual or even praying in the right way, the right place, the right language, or to the right God. But that man sees another human being in need. He goes over, he finds he's alive, he starts binding up his wounds, he bandages them, he puts him on his own animal, takes him to an inn, uh, tries his best to heal him, pays for his stay there. And Jesus said, who was the one that was his neighbor? The lawyer said, well, the one who showed mercy. And that's what we're challenged to do in our own lives, to be that good Samaritan to the needy, the hurting, the broken people of the world. And if we do that, we'll be on the right track. If we don't, our rites and rituals and prayers won't help us very much when we stand before God's throne. Now let us stand and pray together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the mighty, the Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, truly begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, to God from to God, God not made, only in the Father, bringing all things from me, trust me in our salvation, in the end of the power of the Holy Spirit.
Let us pray together for our needs and the needs of all God's holy people. For the church, that we may recognize God's presence in our lives and heed the word of the life of life spoken in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the grace of compassion that we may allow the pain and suffering of others to move our hearts and spirits to a loving response, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all who have reached out and supported us in times of need, that God will bless them abundantly and help us to reach out to others with generous hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all who care for those in need, especially those working in food pantries, soup kitchens, outreach ministries, and care of the homebound, that they may continue to bring God's love and compassion to life for those whom they serve, we pray to the Lord. For all who are ill, that they may know the tender touch of God through the prayer and care of this community, we pray to the Lord. For all who are on mission or service trips this summer, that they may find God in a new way as they share their gifts with others, and that God will protect them on the journey, we pray to the Lord. Lord as we pray this Mass, let us remember John Schatzel, we pray to the Lord. Lord and for the repose of the soul of James Blackshear, we pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, hear all of our prayers. Answer them in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns gently with you, one God forever and ever.
pray, brethren, that our sacrifice and all the sacrifices of our lives may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Lord, accept the gifts of your church. May this Eucharist help us grow in holiness and faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thank, th thanks. All things are of your making. All times and seasons obey your laws. But you chose to create man in your own image, setting him over the whole world in all its wonder. You made man the steward of creation to praise you day by day for the marvels of your wisdom and power through Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise you, Lord, with all the angels in their song of joy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love. Together with Benedict, our Pope, George, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. 
May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Let us ask our Father to forgive our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sin against us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. You. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. Peace be with you. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to see you. I will say the word and I shall be with you. body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. to you in the silence 
I will lift you from all your fear. The body of Christ. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. I am hope for all who are hopeless. The body of Christ. I am eyes for all who long to see. The body of Christ. In the shadows of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. The body of Christ. The body. Do not be afraid, I am with you. The body of Christ. I have called you each the body of by name. The body of Christ. Come and follow me. The body of Christ. I will bring you home. I love you and you. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. I am strength for all the despairing. The body of Christ. Healing for the ones who dwell in shame. All the blind will see. The lame will all run free. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Do not be afraid, I am with the you. Body of Christ. I the have body called Christ. you each by name. The body of Come the body and of follow Christ. me. The I will Christ. bring you home. The body of Christ. I love the you and you. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. I am the word that leads the all to Christ. freedom. The body of Christ. I am the peace the world the cannot give. The body of Christ. I will the call your Christ. name, embracing all Christ. your pain. Stand the up, Christ. no one can the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Do not be afraid. I am with the body of Christ. I have called you each by the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Come and follow me. The body of Christ. I will bring you the body of Christ. I love you and you are mine. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Lord, by our sharing in the mystery of this Eucharist, let your saving love grow within us. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, also with you. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to continue to love and serve the Lord. Yeah.